Hi, alumni friends. Welcome to another NHCC alumni coffee break. It's Troy, the alumni guy, and joining me, a great friend uh, from so many years back now, Wally. I can't believe uh, that all of this time has passed, but Wally Osmond joins the program, folks. Hi, thanks so much for inviting me, Troy. Uh, great to be with you. Absolutely. And I salute you, my friend, with our NHCC Boom coffee mug. And, you know, I have such fond memories of us together. Uh, we started back in a marketing class together. And my memory of Wally from those years is this dynamic person that would take advantage of every opportunity that was afforded to him. I, I mean, I think you personify the North Hennepin Community College experience because you wanted to try everything, Wally. And you just were an inspiration and a joy. And I remember every opportunity that ever came across the table. You were gonna, you were gonna try it. You were gonna give it a whirl. Thank you, Troy. I certainly feel um, lucky uh, because uh, NSCC is where I have um, really uh, began to figure out that relationship between what the world needs from me and, and what I need from the world and uh, a sandbox uh, to play and to develop into uh, the kind of person that I am today and the kind of work that I do in the ways that I show up in the world and in ways that I'm grateful. Absolutely. You know, the personal academic occupational journey, I mean, you just embraced all of it. And I always thought it was really important, but you were a natural, you know, above any other student I can think about, you would always look at that and you were very reflective about value systems and how things were connected and how you could leverage opportunities. You got involved in student life. I know you were very involved in our Rotary Clubs. Uh, you tried every class. I remember you weren't even necessarily thinking marketing, but you wanted to try the class and you entered that class just to have that experience. And then you would share with me, well, I'm going to try this class too, because I think it can be a part of the journey. And so clearly your journey has led to some incredible things. I'd love for you to update the audience, our alumni audience, as to your career now and, and the work that you're doing. Certainly. Uh, thanks, Troy. And so good to be with all of you NSCC uh, family. So, um, you know, I feel like I, like you're saying, uh, Troy, I was one of those obnoxious people that was involved in anything and everything <laughs> in the life of the college, in the classroom and outside of it. And so it really did feel like uh, a, I felt like a kid at a candy store. Uh, and, 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 uh, and so that was really a good grounding for experimentation. And I recall just being a yes person uh, in the sense of like the opportunities that were coming my way. And uh, but I don't necessarily think that um, much of it was in somehow intentional as much as it was folks like you, Troy, who are pointing the finger. <laughs> and then I was like chasing that. Uh, and then that kind of led to accumulating set of experiences and, uh, and skill sets that really have helped me figure out my purpose, uh, my vocation, and helped really um, set me up for success uh, for my uh, story uh, since uh, during and since my time at NSCC. That's wonderful. And so tell our audience uh, where, where you're at and the, the position that you have. Sure. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, I am with the uh, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and uh, primarily focus on, uh, you know, contributing to health and well being across the United States. And uh, so I ended up starting this role um, earlier last year, um, February. Um, and so I relocated uh, to New Jersey in the East Coast as a result of that. But up to uh, that point, I was mostly in Minnesota and and worked at a, another regional private family foundation. Um, and then um, throughout the higher education institutions um, in Minnesota as well. So I am, it's been a, it's been a quite a quite a journey. <laughs> Can't say that I necessarily had a linear 
I think probably nobody does has a sense of idea. Uh, but uh, but th th this is uh, where I'm at now. Wonderful. And so all the way to New Jersey and the East Coast, what have you learned uh, about the East Coast uh, that is different from uh, Minnesota and kind of the mid-America, if you will? Sure. So, you know, my time in New Jersey has, and the East Coast in general, because I live an hour away from New York, an hour from Philly, so I'm really sandwiched well uh, to be able to experience. But unfortunately, my time has significantly overlapped with COVID-19. And so like all of us, uh, I haven't had a chance to be able to engage in the ways that I want to, just to keep safe. But for sure, you know, one thing that New Jersey has proved to be true is that it's the garden state. Uh, and I definitely love nature. Um, it's one of the things that I enjoyed from my time in Minnesota, the lake of Pent uh, the state of Pentanzan Lakes. And yeah, so okay. here, uh, you know, in a sense, it really has has an abundance um, uh, natural uh, and natural nature natural reserves, uh, but also grow a lot of um, fruits and vegetables. Uh, not even very far from where I live. And so that has kind of resulted in uh, a safer and a different way to engage uh, during these um, COVID-19 times and look forward to uh, more to come um, as we're beginning to kind of uh, be hopeful again with the vaccines. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's, and so when you think about just New Jersey in general, what are some things that you would highlight for our audience that I know, the pandemic has limited your ability to travel, uh, but what are some things that you are enjoying most about uh, New Jersey other than the gardening side of it? Sure, um, you know, I have, um, I mean, a bait that it's been virtual, uh, but I am part of a number of communities and we've been engaging virtually and uh, the Kirkridge community, uh, which is not very far from where I live, uh, we've been able to kind of um, connect and support each other virtually as we kind of continue on our developmental agenda and journey as individuals as we develop. And so that has been a, an important part of uh, my support system and some of the ways that I have been fortunate to be able to engage uh, with the state of uh, New Jersey. That's wonderful. And so when you think about life and choices, right, and life can be impacted by so many choices, you, my friend, have tried so many things and made lots of different choices. But how would you reflect back on NHCC and the choices you've made there as they've informed your life now? Sure. So, you know, um, what I do now um, with my work, and maybe I'll step back to say that you know, uh, I, through lots of reflection and work, I've been able to kind of discern, like, what is my, my purpose in this world? And in some yeah. ways, what does the world need from me? And, and what do I need uh, from the world? And that has really resulted in beginning to kind of have a sense and idea of what my North Star is, which is to actualize equity. Like I said, is what I do now internally within this organization. Uh, but I also felt like that's really too far and North Stars is one of those things that you never reach. Uh, so I, I needed to have some, some wings uh, to move towards that direction. And I identified through my reflection process that cultivating a culture of belonging and, and also um, doing that healing inner and outer relationship to be really important part of integrity, uh, important ways for me to show up uh, but also important ways for me to contribute to that broader kind of a vision towards equity in the world. And so I'm very lucky uh, to have kind of gotten to a really clear sense of that. But as I have reflected back on my journey to NSCC, I realized the seeds for all of that actually began there because it was through, um, uh, you know, lots of um, faculty and staff, but in particular, uh, Jerry Hurst, who actually uh, was the person that took me under his wing and early on, you know, uh, without knowing me, <laughs> I recall the first time that I met with him among others, he, meant, he said to me uh, that I, I don't know you, uh, but I'm gonna make some good assumptions about you. <laughs> uh, that was his invitation for me to really 
join uh, the efforts to uh, start the Black Males Leadership Initiative. Yes. Uh, among the other set of intentional communities of support for our students, for the uh, women of uh, color, as well as the Latinx, uh, among, among other uh, demographics of communities at the foundation, at, 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 at North Sandman Community College. And that was really my first kind of a chance and opportunity uh, to get in on the action for what it means uh, to cultivate a community. As I am a student of community, didn't realize it then, but I was getting my most formative um, experiences for cultivating a culture of belonging then. And then that kind of really led to uh, then being an intern and then being a staff person for some time to grow the seeds of the foundations of those bodies of work. And then that kind of organically kind of led to me moving in different directions, but in directions that just deepened on those fronts because I was able to go on to other places uh, to be part of similar efforts uh, in other places, including where I am now at a point where it's also so solidified that I see this really being part of the, the rest of my journey. Uh, whatever that may entail. Yeah, Jerry Earth, what a wonderful man. Um, definitely fond memories of Jerry. We interviewed him here on the coffee break not super long ago. He's retired now, doing very well, uh, but still connected to the college in many ways. Uh, quite a prolific uh, writer. That's so right. he's writing a lot of books. Um, he came back for a couple of our alumni pop-up events where we had guest alumni speakers and we were honored to have Jerry amongst that group. So I'm he's really- a, He's a giant and certainly has had a huge impact on my life and ways that I'm grateful and, and so many others as well. Absolutely, yeah. And they named the uh, Jerry Hurst Center and the Student Life Building after him. <coughs> I wanna wow. say in 20, maybe 2016, 2017. Wow, that yeah. is extraordinary and a well-deserved yeah. honor. Yes, and bless you. Wally. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. And so let's let's close with, you know, you, you shared a favorite memory of, of Jerry Hearth and your interactions with him. Maybe uh, share another top memory you have of the college. Sure. Uh, there's so many, it's hard to actually really choose. Uh, because for me, uh, I feel deep gratitude to the TRIO programs, Shelly Siegel as my advisor and my TRIO mother who took me under her way under her wings and yes. helping me grow in, in some profound ways as well. And I'm also just so grateful for um, you, Troy, because you've also been a key part of helping me connect actually uh, beyond the campus of the institution because you are my connection to the Rotary Club and that built up wonderful collaborations internally with some of the work that we were doing. But also, you know, I remember you even connected me as part of our marketing uh, class to the African Immigrant uh, Services nonprofit because that was my group and I was directly working with applying what we have learned in real life projects within a nonprofit within the community. And so that also has really helped me build up uh, the abilities to be able to work within multiple stakeholders in ways that were collaborative and uh, relational. And so I attribute that as a highlight for me. But I also feel very lucky because I have had chances to be able to be part of student government. And, uh, and uh, that also helped me practice uh, some leadership skills. Uh, but I feel like I also was part of the, um, I really highlight uh, for me, another highlight for me was being part of the the NSCC uh, Foundation um, as well, because I was part of the board uh, for some time since I was able, when I, once I graduated. Uh, and then also, you know, um, the skills that I uh, developed in engaging students on campus in, in, in fellowship uh, and, in, and in community, that's also what I was able to kind of um, transport as transferable skills uh, to other work that I've had uh, to give back uh, through uh, uh, working with my own set of students as an academic coach and as a trio uh, advisor at some point, uh, but also creating intentional communities of support among K-12, uh, other higher learning institutions, as well as 
uh, my work in philanthropy has always been about expanding the boundaries for inclusion. Uh, and so uh, it's hard to kind of point to a specific story, a specific example, when there were so many that really um, ended up being the perfect storm uh, that has created the kinds of learning and conditions uh, for success for me. Well, amongst my fondest memories are all of our interactions of Wally. I loved every minute of it. That was definitely the glory days for me at North Hennepin. I mean, we served on, I know, a student life committee together. You were very involved with a lot of the clubs. As you mentioned, the Rotary, the Brooklyn Park Rotary in particular, uh, we connected with a lot of folks. Uh, and then just general community organizing through service learning. You brought up another happy memory of Abd Abdullah Katamba uh, at African Immigrant Services. Uh, I still am in touch with him, uh, hear great things from him all the time. So, wow, what a wonderful, beautiful walk down memory lane, my friend. Likewise, uh, thank you. It's been a, a terrific opportunity today to be able to reflect uh, in community and with gratitude. Wonderful. So on behalf of Awali Osman, this is Troy, the alumni guy signing off. We'll see you next week on the NHCC alumni coffee break. Bye for now. Take care. Bye-bye.